Welcome to the next video in the Excel VBA Real Example Series. So we're working through our task. Let's get back into the download file. Let's see where we are. So I've gone back to Eric's email now and just to kind of refresh myself on the briefing and exactly what we need. And that's given me some ideas uh, for how to progress this. So we're happy with our table so far. We've got all of our unique entries. That was a big job getting those unique entries and we know which sheets is each entry on. So this is useful information for, for us. This is stuff that Eric wants or it will help us get the stuff that Eric wants. One thing we're definitely missing is a total. So in this column, I'd like to say how many sheets in total do, does each of these customers appear on. So that's what we're going to look at doing in this video. And as always, there's a number of different approaches. And you might say to me, well, Chris, that's easy. Let's put total in here. Chris, that's easy. I can just put a sum formula in here and sum these up. And you know, that's certainly possible. But we've got to remember that we're going to regenerate this table and Eric wants the solution to be dynamic. So if more data is added to the data set, if data is taken away from the data set, our solution should still work. And static formulae present a problem because we have to manage where they are. You know, they're there in the spreadsheet. If we have formulae, we have to think about, okay, do we need to copy them down or do we need to delete some from the bottom? It presents a lot of issues and on balance, I think in this case, a VBA based solution is better. So with that decision made, if you like, we can go back to the VBA code and then we've got to think uh, where in this VBA code can we put in, put in a line of code to sum up each of the sheet, the total number of sheets that the customer uh, appears on. So I think we can slot it in just here. So this line of code is the line of code that inputs the ones, or it might input a two if a customer appears more than one time on one sheet. That's not happening at the moment. So it's inputting these little ones in the table. At the same time, we could say, okay, if the customer appears, input a one in the table and then increase the total cell by one, two. In increase the total cell as well. Okay, and the total cell uh, is over here. Uh, this is the total column. So we just want to increase the value in this cell by one. But again, there's things for us to consider. here. For example, we want a dynamic solution. So if there's more sheets in the file, then this total cell is going to move across. Uh, we want it to move across the sheets uh, effectively. So how are we going to define this? We want a dynamic solution here. And to do that, well, let's use a, a variable here to do that. And let's say total offset because we're going to offset. It's to do with position control here as integer. And what is this uh, value of total offset going to be? Well, we're going to offset from, we're offsetting from column D here. So we want to offset by the total number of sheets, the total number of data sheets in the file plus one. That's in fact, just the total number of data sheets in the file, although we'll test it later uh, to kind of fine tune it. So we could say, um, let's, how might we initialize this variable? We can initialize it up, up at the top here. And I'm just going to make a little bit more room down at the bottom here so we can see all the code. Let's, let's give this uh, variable a value here. And let's just say active workbook dot sheets dot count and minus three, I think is going to do the job. So by using this line of code that we've used before, active sheets dot active workbook dot sheets dot count, that value is going to increase with every sheet in the workbook. That's going to have the effect of moving this value across the worksheet. It's a dynamic solution. It's going to work with more data. That's exactly what we're looking for. Okay, and then down here, we're going to need a piece of code. And let's take some code that we know is working already. Yep, I'm just going to copy this line of code. You just see that at the bottom of your screenshot there. And um, row position I'm happy with because that's the that's giving us the position of this name in the data set. We're happy with that. Now this is going to change, however, and let's go for total offset here. So that variable 
we assign a value to at the top here, we're then using that value uh, in this offset. And just for, um, just for testing, I'm gonna just put some text in here and let's see, let's see if it works. So again, we do a small bit. We know this is gonna be wrong. This is not the final solution. We do a little bit, test it. That's how we build confidence. Uh, in this case, yeah, we could step through the code. We could just run the code. I'm just gonna put a stop here. So just left click in this little margin. That puts a stop in. That's gonna stop the code. And let's just uh, delete this uh, blank line. That's not necessary. Okay, so I'm gonna play the code here. Just hit the play button this time. And okay, I'm just gonna hit F8 now. Now, what have we got in the file? Ah, okay, you can see where here has appeared. It's actually appeared in column G. So we know that's not quite right. We want it to appear in column H. So very simple. Uh, I can just uh, adjust how we uh, assign a value to that variable there. And then uh, it should be okay. So I'm just gonna stop the code here. Control S, save the file. Clear out the existing data. Clear out the existing data. I think in a second, we'll look at how we can automate this process of clearing out the existing data because that's getting quite onerous now. And then what are we expecting to happen? Well, we've got this new line of code here. So we're expecting in the total column just to have lots of here's, just to have lots of text in there. It's not what we want, but it moves us closer, moves us closer uh, to what we want. Control S, save the file, F5, run the code. We've got our analysis running there and we've just got all of our here's here. And then we go down to the bottom, yeah, and it all seems to be lining up at the bottom. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So we've got the positioning, right? Remember, this is a dynamic mechanism. So if more sheets were added, this would move across the sheet. So that's also good. Uh, but we don't just want here to appear. What we'd actually want to do, what we actually want to do is increment the value of the cell up by one. If it equals one, we want it to equal two. If it equals two, we want it to equal three. Just increment it up by one. How do we do that? Well, the key concept here is x equals x plus one. And again, I'm gonna put an underscore in here so I can continue this line of code on the next line. That's not necessary, but it keeps it in your screenshot and it just keeps things for me. Uh, I prefer viewing it that way. It keeps things a little bit easy to understand. So the concept is x equals x plus one, but in this case, x is quite a long uh, piece of code, but this should have the effect of putting the value into the cell and incrementing it up uh, every time we go through the code and this name appears. So I'm clearing out the, uh, clearing out the data there. I'm gonna hit the F5 key now, run the code. Okay, and what's happening here? Yeah, we've got some uh, data appearing here. Yeah, and it, and it seems to be reasonable, but we're thinking, don't believe it. We're thinking, okay, how might we test this? So to test this, uh, we could just select uh, this column of data. Now, if it's accurate, all of the values in these columns should equal the value in this column because we're totaling things up in this column. And I'm looking, just control shift and down there. So I've got 145, I can see at the bottom of Excel, 145 there. And then let's do the same thing here, control shift down, shift and down arrow, and I can see we've got 145 there. So we've done a quick test uh, to see that that works. So I'm happy with that. We've got the total in there. Yep, we could have done that with a formula. Hopefully you can see with VBA, it's very clean and yeah, it gets it done uh, fairly efficiently as you saw that. Okay, so there is one more thing I want to do here, which is to automate the process of clearing the data. Automate the process of clearing the data. Now, we could do this dynamically, um, but I don't want to go into too much detail in this series and elsewhere on the channel and in this series, we've looked at how to dynamically define ranges, but we've already assumed that the data range is fixed. In these formulae, for example, we've assumed a fixed data range of row seven to row 2000 in column C. So I'm going to continue that assumption. And in the VBA editor, I'm going to have a new routine down at the bottom here. Let's see if we can scroll up. Yep, so you can see that in your screenshot. So I'm gonna put this in a new routine. So, and then call the routine from the original routine, okay? So this routine, why am I doing that? This routine is, get, is getting quite long now, and I prefer to work with short, maintainable routines, easier to understand, 
easy, easier to maintain. Also, it gives us this kind of modular quality, like IKEA furniture. We take different parts and different parts go into different pieces of furniture. We can take that little slice of code, maybe you want to call it from a different routine, copy paste it to a different file. So this modular approach where you have small maintainable routines, that's what I recommend. And let's just say clear data here, informative routine name. And then we can say sheets analysis. And then we've got our data range here. I mean, certainly a weakness of this. I said I wasn't going to do it dynamically, but I'm now more tempted to do it dynamically. Well, maybe you could think about how you might do, do this dynamically because the number of columns might change, uh, for example. Uh, but we don't want to go too far into the detail in this series, but you might want to think, how would you set up a dynamic mechanism to do that? We're just going to say uh, C7, and then we're going to column H here to H2000. Uh, H200, I put in there, H2000. And we want clear contents. Now, if you say clear contents, that's going to clear the contents, the data in the cell, uh, but it's going to retain the formatting. So that could be useful. Control S, save the file. Going to test this C7 to H2000. Uh, C7 sounds right. H2000 is all the way down there. Also looks right. So Control S, just run this code here, F5 key, and our data has disappeared. That looks reasonable. So we now want to call that routine, call that routine from this routine here. Let's call it right at the top and just say call clear data. And I'm going to check that that was the name of the routine going down the VBA editor. Yeah, so Excel is going to go to clear data. In fact, let's step through it and see it in action. F8 key. We're going to go to the other routine now. So we're calling one routine for another routine. It would clear the contents if there was some data in there. There's no data in there. And then it's going to get into the routine as usual. I'm just going to hit the play button here and we can see our routine running there. So yeah, this is how I usually manage the process of clearing, uh, clearing data. Often I have some kind of dynamic mechanism in this series. We've assumed we're going to work with a data range of about 2000 rows. As always, there's no one right way to do it. Having this approach is simpler. And there's other approaches that have more complex code that are more difficult. Siri always turns on during my recordings. I'm not absolutely, absolutely sure why, so sorry if you heard that. Anyway, uh, that's as far as we'll go in this video. So I hope you work along with me getting the code working and we're getting progressing with this task. I'll see you in the next video.